Hi guys, I'm Schmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you're joining me today in Germany on a beautiful morning here in the Eiffel Mountains. We've got the Nürburgring Castle in the background in the area of the Nürburgring. But today is all about the AMG GTR Roadster and finally taking this car over to Opus to do the upgrade to the seats. Now with the AMG GTR Roadster, unlike the Coupe, you could only spec the car with the AMG Performance seats. As 488 Spider just crawled by. M2 popping and banging as well. So that means in this car, I have the admittedly bespoke seats that we had arranged with the yellow stitching, but the AMG Performance seat, which I find far too firm and uncomfortable. And I'm gonna take it for the short drive and explain why in a second. But effectively, I bought via Opus nearly a year ago, the bucket seats from the coupe, which we're going to start the process to install today. And it's not as simple as it might sound. It is not a case of just removing these, fitting some new ones and done. The electronics are a little bit more complicated than that. So we're gonna head over with the Roadster, with the GT4 and with Schmark 150's Mad for Mini GP3 to go over to Opus to start the work on this and explain all. We drove over all the way with these two then, the GT4 and the AMG GTR Roadster. It's the second time the Roadster's been over here to the Nürburgring, although last time it had that little issue, you might remember, with the front spoiler, which limited the speed to 200 kilometers an hour, 124 miles per hour. Hopefully, when the seats are done, I'll be able to do a quick run out on the green hill with it. The GT4 has never been around. I'm looking forward to my first laps coming up soon as well with that car on the Nürburgring. But these two are now absolutely filthy. Admittedly, they were a little bit dusty before we departed. We then had a bit of rain driving out of the UK and they are now completely splattered with bugs as well. So we'll need to get those cleaned up at some point soon. We're also today going to take a look at this, the new GP3. In fact, wearing a new design as well. This color is stunning. You've got the inverted roof and other details as well. We'll go through all of that in a little bit, but today is primarily about this and about the work that's going to be involved with Lucas over at Opus to get these seats changed out. So let's get it started. It's just around the corner to get from here over to Opus. We've got, what, seven and a half thousand kilometers on the clock. Sounds good already. So let's head over and go get this operation underway. Given it is such a lovely day and we are in the AMG GTR Roadster, I think the roof is going down, even though it's a short hop. I'm gonna pop it up into race mode as well. All right, short drive round. GT4 starts up as well. Okay, roof done, windows up. Yep, all nice and good. Okay, let's head on around then. And these seats, they're just instantly firm. So, out we go. Follow the GT4 in the purple and gold. These are completely different cars. Mid-engine GT4, mid-front-engine GTR Roadster. Are we good? Completely clear. What a beautiful day. What an absolutely beautiful day. Honestly, was not expecting this. This would typically be the way that you go around towards the entrance of the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Now, of course, this area has had a pretty hard time in recent months. It's bizarre coming back here for the first time since, because here in Nürburgring, at the Nürburgring, you don't see any of it, and nor did I see any of it on the drive in. But obviously the flooding that happened here has been horrific, and a lot of people have been pretty badly impacted. Unfortunately, many lives were lost by the flash floods as the river through the valley effectively significantly rose instantaneously late at night. And the guys at Apex, Misha and Robert and the team, and a lot of others have been instrumental in, in helping so much with this. So full credit to them for all of their work. And I'll pop some more information about it down below. It's just quite strange being back here and not, I guess, seeing any of that because it's the local area as opposed to here. This is quite high in the valley. Anyway, we come round down here towards the Nordschleife entrance. My instinct says, let's turn right and head in, but we'll save that for another day. Now, let me talk a little bit more about these seats because seats in a car, especially in a performance car, are obviously very important. You feel what the car's doing and you enjoy the comfort of the ride. But every single person is different. Every person 
fits into different seats, whether that's your height, the shape of your back, whether it's the width of your shoulders, whether it's how you feel the vibrations, we're all different, all of us. And that means that seats for any two people are basically not the same. I particularly like, as some uh, Porsches, I think, go flying down the Dottinger Hur here, I particularly like seats in a car where you're well supported, but obviously fit me. So for example, the buckets that you get in the Mercedes that we're going to go and install now, and the buckets that are in McLarens are based around the same shell and happen to both suit me really quite nicely, which is why I'm doing this. These seats I find way too firm. They make me very, very, very uncomfortable. I'm not the biggest fan of them in the slightest. And every time I get in this car, I feel like they actually emphasize how firm it is. They take away some of the ride quality in the process as we go through the little bit of tunnel here. So we the GT4 was quite quiet. That was a nice little snap out of this. It's literally this shorter drive from here around to Opus in the test center area here where there are lots of manufacturers and you never know what you might see just crawling and roaming around the streets. Anyway, we'll head on down a little bit further and get this car inside and go see the new seats. Here we are then at Opus, back inside the workshop where we have quite a few cool things to check out, including that Solar Beam GTR Pro. We're gonna go and take a look at that and my new seats are also lurking just around the corner. But I came here for the first time a couple of years ago with my original AMG GTR, the Beast of the Black Hell, when we did the stage two, the upgrade with the new twin turbos. Then I came two years ago with the G63. We did the Akrafovich exhaust and a tune. Then last year with the SLS Black Series to do the headers and tune to make it into a complete monster. And now it is the turn of the GTR Roadster to swap from these original performance seats to my new seats which are waiting just there but before we check those out have a look at this the solar beam yellow gtr pro one of 750 this is of course the same color that my gt black series is currently being painted it's no longer available directly from factory but it looks stunning now this car has opus's full upgrade to 777 horsepower along with also having their carbon fiber louvres on the fenders which is something that i think amg really missed the trick with not offering for the car originally the contrast with the paintwork is absolutely lovely also notice it's running the regular gtr wheels i think a second Set and spot through the window, we've also got a yellow cage and yellow seat belts. Perhaps some inspiration there for my Black Series a little bit down the line as well. Now, while that is stunning, we have of course come to see these, the new seats that are going to be going into the GTR Roadster. We have the original OEM bucket seats. They have the cutouts, for example, the seat belts finished in the exact leather as the interior. Also the dual yellow stitch and with the yellow AMG embroidery on the headrest. Of course, they need the mounting brackets to put them in place. They are significantly lighter, by the way, than the standard seats, so much that you can literally just pick it up. It is not a very heavy seat, and these aren't even the full carbon ones. But then in addition to that, Opus have gone one step further, and here where we've got the seat bases and the backrests, these actually have a heating element in them. These are going to have heated seats, it's a convertible after all, which you don't normally have in, well, in a bucket seat configuration. We've got the bases exactly the same. I think they've got the detection uh, sensors for airbags and things. Obviously all of the wiring needs to go into that, but those will be operated through the car's regular controls. And in my eyes, bucket seats in a convertible is what it's all about really adds something to the driving experience. So the plan for the moment, I believe, is to effectively pull out probably the passenger seat to get started, to get a feel for what it's gonna look like with the bucket seats in place. But you can see the exact same stitch, the exact same materials. This is going to be fantastic. 
If you're wondering then, what makes this process so complicated? Because it is not exactly the first time ever changing some seats in a car, but in this, it's not as simple as you might think. Of course, you have to go through the normal motions to remove the seat. So in this case, taking out the seat belt, we've got the same yellow belts in here, bringing them right to the front and up, loosening the rails at the bottom, and then ultimately releasing the connectors and lifting it out. But when you've taken out the passenger seat and the driver's seat, because these are the electric memory seats, they also have the air scarf that blows warm air on the neck as well, you're then removing the ECUs. And in the case of this car, the electric steering column is controlled from the seat's ECU. So without that, you can't move the steering wheel at all. So obviously that needs to be resolved and that's a much more complicated case of coding it, setting up the software, and that's what's going to take a little bit of time. For the moment though, this is just about ready to be taken out. I think it's that simple, a couple of minutes, but something else is being done in the meantime to do with the exhaust valve. Now Opus have a valve switch. You can control independently of your different driving modes inside the car, and you can actually therefore put the car into the quieter exhaust mode inside, which means without the speaker sound, and manually open the valves and have all the outside sound, which is quite a cool additional mode option that's then available for it as a result. So seats out and a few other things, but that is not all we're going to do today. In fact, I think in a second, we're gonna head over and go check something else out. The first thing is that the seat is now out. You can see in here a little bit dirty, but basically you have the mounting points, which are where the new bucket is going to be installed. But what I want to show you as scientifically as we can do it, is the weight difference between the original seat and the bucket. It is so much lighter. You saw me earlier basically picking this up, yeah? Easy, no stress at all. Picking up the full performance seat is like a full operation. Now we've got a set of digital scales here to give you some kind of an idea of what this is going to be. So I've got to work out how to lift it. Pop this over here. I won't be able to get it completely perfect. But roughly speaking, this is a 27 kilo seat. Of course, that includes the brackets and ECUs and everything and all of the motors and technology. 27 kilos, each seat, remember. This one, if we go and put it on the scales, comes in at, obviously without the rails at the moment. Let's pop it down. Under nine. Add the rails and you're probably going to be at about 11 and a half, 12. So 27 kilos, 12 kilos, 30 kilos saved between the two seats, swapping them for the buckets. That's really quite crazy. In fact, it's so easy to hold this, get a feel for how this is going to look. Obviously, he says very carefully doing this, made much easier by being a roadster. That's just cool, isn't it? Bucket seats in a convertible. Yeah, very, very happy, even more so now that I know the weight savings of this. We now have the controller installed for the exhaust valve. And although we don't have one of the seats in the car, I can give you a quick demo of this. So let me just press the brake, start this up very quickly. We are currently in comfort mode, as you can see from the toggle here on the steering wheel. If we come round back at the moment, we have it effectively in the closed mode. If I press open, you can hear the exhaust valve. It gets significantly deeper and more grumbly. And the default operation as well will, of course, operate in terms of opening the valves at their regular position. That is a very nice little feature. Thank you to Opus for the installation of that here as well today. The plan for the meantime is to leave the GTR Roadster here in the hands of the team at Opus. They're going to do the work to swap over the seats and to take a little bit of time to make sure all of the software is completely correct before I come and pick it up again in a couple of days and get to enjoy more of the exhaust valve and what it's like to drive with the new seats. Maybe even if I have time, taking that for another lap around the ring and being able to go over 200 kilometers an hour with it. But this is not the end of today because we're going to head over to the dyno to go and check out the Opus GT Black Series. Over here then at the dyno with Lucas. How you doing? Hello. This is looking pretty cool and this is not so standard. Uh, no. I mean, obviously there are some videos already online with Gear Collector's car. 
mm -hmm. uh, who has also our exhaust system, mainly the downpipes, and also this remote control. The valve flaps. controller. And uh, this car is now equipped with the final version of uh, the DCAT exhaust system. So uh, we expect it to be slightly louder. So this is when I'm going to have to stand well back. <laughs> let's see, I mean, let's start it up and, uh, and see. Definitely. Are we, are we going to be a cold start or has it been? Yeah, that's a cold start now. Okay, so we have a cold start of DCAT GT Black Series. drive-by clips as well. numbers are in how's it looking impressive another <laughs> like 20 horsepower on top of the last exhaust system with the cats so what are we talking uh we're talking about 831 hp with a stock map so it's not even tuned yet so it's stock just, map yeah, but with stock the map with just the decad exhaust system on 830 horsepower and the, and the flap control yeah okay that's and that. the car was stock 763 that's a huge increase yeah wow i mean it's a powerful car to begin with and this is well on the way what's what's the aim where's it going um 900 plus 900 plus yeah i think we'll see some big numbers big big numbers anyway i guess the plan is to take it outside and have a listen what it's like on the road
I think that has been proof that although the GT Black Series might not have the most characterful sound direct from the factory, if you bring it to Opus, it can sound moderately insane. The cracks as it downshifts, the fireballs popping out at the back as well, and all of the noises, the generally rawer and more throatier V8 sound. Of course, the flat plane crank sound is very different to the cross plane crank found in the other AMG GT models, more akin, as I said, to the noise of a modified Ferrari 488, that kind of thing. A lot louder, a lot better, and of course, various different configurations. This being the stock tune and already making cracks that sound like that. I'm certainly going to have some food for thought for myself as to what I'm going to do, but I will be checking out one of these again in the coming days, so stay tuned for that. We said we'd also touch today on the Mini GP3, so we are, of course, here with Mark. Yep, and this is my Mini GP3, which I've changed pretty much uh, completely. First of all, a new wrap, tech wrap blue, Avery white on top, and this design is pretty much similar to what I did to my GP2. Um, but I would just want to have a different color and uh, this is quite flashy It fits really well to these quite funky arches and the spoiler that's on the back um, I just think it fits better um, Next to that painted the wheels white and black unusual uh, design on the wheels. Yeah, yeah, yeah It's like I wanted to have white wheels once in my life and uh, you can see what is the issue They're never white <laughs> um, And next to that um, Yeah, of course we painted uh, we wrapped these um, yes, the arches because they're normally the chopped yeah chopped carbon and I don't like the look of it at all so uh, next to that uh, new exhaust mm -hmm. uh, Miltec cat back exhaust and we put some pops and bangs in it so to give a little bit of flavor back to the car it was quite boring um, lower tires low. yeah yeah we did the tires got twos on it slightly different size so that I have a bit more grip on track and a different suspension system which makes it a touch softer because the car is so hard to drive daily yeah um, and, uh, yeah it wasn't really uh, favorable so let's look at the other anything inside and uh, yeah lovely there's a passenger display on the inside yeah and uh, that gives you all kinds of information and details and I put some carbon on the steering wheel Alcantara on the steering wheel yeah nice and uh, that's about it that's what I've done to the car you know it's like more than enough I don't need to do more there are other people that do a lot more upgrades on the car but I found it more than enough like this it's fine it's cool and now we're going to use it on the track and uh, see how it is. Knowing you, there will be plenty more modifications to come. No, no, I'm done. No, that's it? That's it. That's quite restrained. Yeah, I don't want to do more. You know, the BMW <laughs> is completely man mental and so much upgrades there. I'm just done. I'm done. All my cars are finished in. My BMW is finished. My Mini is finished. And I tinted the windows on my X-T3. Done. I'm not tuning anything. I'm not tuning your cars. <laughs> I don't believe you, but oh, we'll have to watch this space. You watch this space. We have some interesting things happening on your cars. <laughs> well, this looks good. Thanks for showing us around. For now, I can't wait to get back out here to pick up the GTR Roadster with its new bucket seat. Something I've been wanting to do since the car was originally introduced, I think, probably what, two years ago or so? Well, it's finally underway. I'll be able to pick it up and take it back home with the bucket seats very soon, which will leave me with a set of performance seats that potentially I can build into some kind of frame to have as a bit of a seat or couch or sofa kind of thing in the Schmuseum in future. For now though, a big thanks to the guys at Opus. Cool to see everything going on, the carbon louvres, the exhaust valve switches, and all of the other modifications they do for AMGs and other cars as well. For today though, that is all. Thank you very much for watching guys, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.